Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Um, I wasn't. Um, I was living a complete lie and facade that I was okay for a long time. Um, but I'm good now. Um, How is good defined? <clears throat> good is better than yesterday. <laughs> better than I was before. Um, I just um, have a scope on where I'm going, and I know that that is up from here because I know the struggles that I've had and I've learned from them, and I know the signs, and I know when I'm not okay. So today I can say I'm good. It was important. You're actually the first guest that I've had in studio Why, since. You. Well, I, because the nature of what we're discussing, I, I really felt that it was important that we be in the same space, yeah, that we too. be eye to eye in this, because none of this is easy to talk about. And I wanted you to feel that you were being heard. Yeah. Thank you. It was back in July that I woke up like so many other people. Tamar is trending, and I thought, okay, maybe it's another spat with someone or whatever. And someone texted me and said, uh, Tamar Braxton was rushed to the hospital. And I thought, okay, wait a minute, did she fall? Did, what happened? A car accident? No, Tamar attempted suicide. Yeah. Did you? First, let me say, um, Thank you for recognizing that this is a serious topic and having me here eye to eye so that the people who don't understand what they're feeling and don't know that mental illness is a real situation and it has to be taken very serious. So thank you for having me here for that. Um, I absolutely did. And... I have to start at the beginning so you yeah. can understand. And I do want to hear that. So take us, because I had interviewed you earlier yeah. in the summer. We were doing the shows from home. Yeah. And you were talking about, I can't wait to see my family. I'm in L.A., but they're all in Atlanta. I asked you about your son, Logan, who's seven now. You were saying things. You were juggling things. Yeah. Your then fiancé was with you in the home at the time. Yeah. What happened leading up to the day in July? that the ambulance was called with an emergency. I was lying about how amazing I was doing. And I allowed the makeup and the hair to cover up everything that I was feeling because that's just what you're used to do when you know, you're a working mother or you just have to get things done. You know, you cover up, right? Um, our household became very hard. And it was hard because I wasn't happy at my job. And I hadn't been happy for years. Your job? At the network, at yeah. At the network doing the show. Doing the show. And it turned into a spinoff show all because I wanted to do other things. And so the way that my contract was set up was um, they would leverage more time at the network and more shows for them for me to do other things that I wanted to do. So I didn't want to do the spinoff, Get Your Life. And um, when it was presented to me that this is basically the only way to do another show that I really was excited about doing, and it was positive, and it was fun, and it was more me, um, OK, so I'll do that. And it was supposed to be about me having a one-woman show, going on the road, and talking about my life after my divorce from Vince. What was it about this uh, relationship with the network that you, that led you to want to take your own life or attempt to take your own life? Why did that end up with you wanting to, wanting to hurt yourself? Absolutely. I, I already felt dead. I felt choked. Was that because Every of the day. show or other things, Tamar? It was about um, feeling like I could never be myself and being misunderstood and having the stigma of the angry black woman all the time. And that's not who I am. That's not what I wanted to portray. So you know? the weight of this reality version of you 
And it was the same thing. And it wasn't just about being an angry black woman. It was about real issues coming up on the show. Um, my family did um, an episode with Ayanna Vincent, and I was excited about it, but that excitement came to an end when she decided to tell everyone that I was domestically sexually abused from the ages of six to 16, and I'd never told anyone that. I want to pause you on that because that is a big moment. It's a big moment. And it is a big allegation. Well, it's not an allegation, it's a fact. You felt that this portrayal of you was damaging damaging you emotionally. Continuously. How did it lead to the night or the day that you attempted to take your own life? Um, well, after I sent the letter, I got a um, call sheet to come to work anyway, as if I didn't tell anybody that I felt like I was going to kill myself. I wanted to die, continuing this path. Um, and then after my attorneys and myself was like, you guys, this is serious. We, this is really, this is not going to work. Um, I later got a breach letter the day before. And a breach letter means that um, you, you're now in breach and we are stopping your money and stopping you from working any other place. Did they believe that this was a stunt, that somehow you didn't want to do the show? For me, yeah, I love television, you know? Um, and I wanted to do other positive television. I just didn't want to be that person anymore. It was killing me, literally, Tamara. Was what was it me. doing to you? Did you... I had um, no self-esteem. It was really hard to look at myself and know that this was the example that I was being, not only for me as a black woman, but for me as a mother. So you're saying the, the drama, the antics, the fighting, the, all and of that. This is not a, a regular cast, this is my family. And I love my family. And I didn't wanna fight with my family. And I didn't want to be an example of a family who fights and argues and always have turmoil. And now we're at the point where it's assaults and threats and this is not the show that I created. I created the Braxton Family of Value because I wanted to be an example, a part of the black community with five black amazing sisters with all different walks of life, who can inspire and help and people can learn from our experiences along the way. We wasn't teaching anything but being devilish. And I didn't want to do that. Do you think that there was a pressure? I know you can't speak for other family members, but from your perspective to perform, to keep upping the ante, to keep bringing the drama so that the show would continue for the show and for my family, we wanted to have a great show. And sometimes that is making a deal with the devil. That is doing things that you wouldn't normally do. It's which selling brings, your family up a river. Which brings me to this allegation yeah. that someone within your family yeah. told your deepest pain. What happened? Well, we went for help. Who is we? Me and my family went for help. We went for counseling. And I wasn't helped, I was humiliated. What were you seeking help for? Um, because it, from the show, it, it did create a lot of division between me and my sisters. And it did create, you know, something that was never there, which was we couldn't get along and we couldn't communicate. We stopped communicating. And we just simply wasn't a family anymore. And that helped turn into a nightmare for me. You, in your heart, believe that someone in your family gave producers information about you being sexually abused so that people could watch the show. Do you, 
You, I know you understand this I understand allegation. I where you're coming from, but I know for sure I didn't tell her. <laughs> you know, I know that we never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so when that came out, I was stunned. And my relationship with not just my family, but my job, the network changed forever. Then at that moment was the first time I felt like I didn't want to live anymore. But then I got a call sheet to go to work the next day.